It's great to be back with Anastasia Berachinko, and uh, this is this is great, Anastasia. Welcome back to the program. Hi, Louis, and uh, thank you so much uh, for, for for this uh, interview. It's very important for us and for Ukraine uh, to be heard. Well, that's what we'll do here today: is is uh, is hear you and listen closely, because that's what we uh, in the world must do every day. We must not stop listening closely. So let's begin that and talk about Kiev. What uh, Kiev? What's happening now in Kiev? I heard that there is some relative calm. Tell me more about the current situation in Kiev. Uh, okay, I'm and my family. Uh, still in Kiev. Uh, now I'm in shelter, uh, not because uh, we are having air attack, but uh, in case we will have during the interview, I sit in shelter to, to, to make all this uh, in safe mode. Uh, we, um, comparing to the March, uh, situation in April in Kiev and Kiev region uh, is uh, much better. Uh, much better in terms of uh, risks uh, and uh, we have uh, heavy artillery attacks um, uh, to the suburbs of Kiev, uh, to some uh, districts of Kiev, and um, actually it was very noisy. And uh, I was uh, I was stressed because it's very very heavy and uh, mm, fearful noise. Uh, but um, now uh, Kiev Kiev region is free of occupants, is free of uh, Russian soldiers, uh, and we have almost zero risk of heavy artillery attack uh, because all these uh, machines uh, should be uh, about 30 or 40 kilometers uh, in order to attack effectively. Uh, that is why uh, Kiev uh, and um, region and um, I could say almost all territory of Ukraine still is the object of uh, air attack. They use rockets, they use military plane to attack us. Uh, but uh, in Kiev, we have a quite good air defense system. Uh, and um, it's not uh, very automated, but it depends on skills of our armed force. And uh, I'm proud that they are very good in uh, air defense uh, in Kiev, uh, at least. Uh, I think uh, from the uh, beginning of April, uh, when uh, the towns near the Kiev were uh, free, uh, f free of Russian soldiers, uh, we... Um, we feel ourselves much better. Uh, and uh, also it was understandable uh, of um, small and uh, middle businesses in Kiev. Uh, every, uh, everything like restaurants, coffee shops, uh, cafes, um, uh, barber shops, uh, nail services, some, a lot of small businesses relaunched their work. Uh, and uh, it became much better with uh, food supply. Uh, with um, uh, some medicines delivery. Uh, it was not completely catastrophic in Kiev in March, but uh, in April, uh, every uh, everything uh, become in a more uh, normal or um, uh, way we, we should uh, see it uh, in a normal, our peaceful life. Uh, also, there is a good situation with city uh, municipal transport uh, and uh, our main um, transport artery is uh, underground uh, and uh, our underground uh, is uh, almost in working mode. We have uh, some uh, long um, uh, pauses uh, between, uh, between trains uh, arrivals, but uh, it's uh, I could say in almost normal working mode, and uh, it is uh, possible for all um, city population, for all people, to uh, to move, uh, to go to their jobs, uh, and uh, and uh, do their works. And uh, also, one of the signals that uh, things become better in Kiev was uh, that uh, Kiev citizens. Kiev is a city with population more than uh, four, or was, by some estimation, even five million peoples, uh, people, and um, at least half of them uh, fled uh, during the march. And now almost one million uh, people come back, 
and we uh, see even even some traffic jam uh, we, uh, there is uh, there were no traffic jam in march it's not difficult situation for kiev uh, we are um, have a transported city and we have uh, as usual a lot of traffic jams and, and in april we have uh, already some traffic jams uh, uh, from the one hand, uh, I, uh, as, a, um, as a woman, as a Ukrainian citizen, should uh, feel myself better. But uh, every time I think about uh, the, uh, about my city, my Kyiv, I think about the price. Uh, what price we pay as nation, as Ukraine, uh, to, to have Kyiv, uh, to, to keep Kyiv uh, in peace because uh, a lot of small villages near Kiev and Kiev region, a lot of uh, small towns like Bucha, like Irpin, like Hostomil, uh, they were destroyed completely. Uh, yes, they stopped our enemies. But what was the price? Uh, uh, actually, when uh, in the beginning of April, our armed force uh, goes to uh, Bucha, to Irpin, to Hostomil, uh, they find out uh, actually a lot of military crimes, uh, crimes against civil people, uh, crime against uh, civil men, civil women, and even civil children. Uh, it was murders, uh, it was a lot of uh, sexual crimes, uh, it was a lot of uh, looping and uh, murder. And um, uh, actually, it's not a story of a kind of fifth handshake. Uh, Olena, it's our industrial project, uh, project manager she lived uh, in bucha and she successfully escaped uh, in the beginning of march i could say uh, and uh, now when uh, she come back to her home uh, her city uh, almost destroyed uh, and um, her houses were subject of um, artillery attack uh, some uh, some apartments uh, were destroyed uh, a, a lot of uh, windows uh, lost their glasses and destroyed. Uh, almost every apartment uh, was robbed. Uh, and uh, it is a typical situation. It is the price um, Kiev and Ukraine paid for, for keeping Kiev as capital uh, safe. And it uh, causes a lot of uh, questions and uh, tasks for us and for our government because our um, uh, defense line uh, should also include not only Kievan borders, but also borders of uh, small towns. Uh, we should uh, reestablish defense line of our villages because a lot of villages were destroyed by tanks, by artillery, and also robbed. Uh, and um, we uh, actually, as country, were not prepared so good uh, for the war, but um, I, I, I couldn't say uh, that any country except Israeli uh, is uh, always ready for such kind of war. So it's like a kind of uh, spoon of uh, my maybe not very um, uh, happy uh, thoughts uh, in, in terms that in Kiev uh, things are much better uh, and in um, northern Ukraine uh, Kyiv uh, region, uh, Chernigiv uh, region, uh, Sum region uh, situation is much, much better uh, in terms of uh, safety, in, ter in terms of uh, food uh, supply, in terms of water supply, electricity, and so on. Uh, but uh, I couldn't help uh, thinking about uh, all this um, all the victims, all the all that price we paid uh, as a country for the Kiev stability and safety. You know, I know that you've mentioned the crimes, uh, sexual crimes, uh, murdering. Yeah. You know, this is just uh, incredible, and uh, it's such an awful atrocity. And the war crimes are uh, currently being held even in the international tribunals, uh, and uh, going through several. Uh, loopholes and, and bureaucracy uh, to get there. What do you say to the uh, Inter International Criminal Court, uh, you yourself and other uh, Ukrainian women and, uh, and uh, citizens, what should happen after these war, war, uh, these war crimes? What do you expect to happen? What, what do you call for? Uh, 
uh, I think uh, we should uh, have a court or a tribunal, military tribunal, uh, because uh, a lot of Ukrainian people uh, are became victims of military uh, crimes. Uh, Actually, our government uh, is uh, is good with uh, procedures of documenting all these crimes. Uh, also, we um, invite uh, foreign uh, experts and uh, specialists uh, uh, with the task to uh, well document and uh, well record uh, all these um, all these crimes. Uh, we also um, have. Uh, our application, it's a government application DIA, uh, and uh, any uh, uh, any person who uh, lost uh, his uh, home or his car or any uh, uh, received any damages from Russian army, uh, like uh, not uh, like um, uh, uh, they they could use this application to make uh, photos and appeal. Uh, a, for uh, for material support, and uh, this also a uh, possibility to have uh, a mass uh, mass recording because uh, people go to their uh, come back to their homes and uh, record all the thing and upload uh, the photos to the application, and uh, government and our uh, minister of digital transformation could manage this uh, data massives uh, arrival uh, and, and could uh, also uh, make a recording of uh, of crimes uh, it is very useful uh, in terms of, of um, houses destruction in terms of robbery in terms of uh, looping and something like that but when we speak about uh, for example murders or uh, sexual crimes uh, we need uh, support and expertise uh, of uh, um, of doctors uh, of uh, medical experts and uh, in terms of uh, for example sexual crimes there is very um, low uh, and not optimistic statistic because uh, in ukraine uh, less than 30% of uh, for example rape victims um, go to the police uh, and uh, report because uh, it's a very sensitive sensitive issues and um, it, it, we uh, even couldn't estimate uh, the uh, full uh, number of uh, victims of such a crimes. Uh, but uh, uh, as our ombudsman uh, Denisova reported uh, yesterday, uh, almost 400 cases of uh, sexual assaults were recorded. So uh, there is uh, uh, actually a lot of uh, materials for uh, Ukrainian uh, courts and uh, it, it could be materials uh, and arguments even for military tribunal because sexual uh, crimes during war, it's uh, uh, military crimes. Uh, that is why uh, me and uh, my colleagues, um, uh, people I speak, my friends, uh, we are uh, believe that uh, one day uh, all responsible uh, people uh, will be under a military tribunal. Uh, maybe it was a case like uh, it was um, similar to the Nuremberg process. Uh, but uh, we uh, we trust and we believe that one day it, it uh, became uh, possible. Um, what is um, what, what make me more optimistic is that uh, we uh, could prove, uh, for example, uh, sexual crimes uh, much easier that uh, it was possible 20 years ago because of DNA analysis. And uh, it uh, could uh, almost with a 30 percent uh, guarantee uh, name the uh, criminal. Uh, that is why uh, our uh, key task now is uh, to fix and to record um, and keep all the materials uh, concerning um, the crimes issues, military crimes, uh, and. Um, the level of digitalization of Ukraine uh, uh, help us uh, to do it uh, in a full um, scope and to, to do it effectively. 
and I hope uh, and I believe uh, it's not only my position, but it's position of also our president, our government. Uh, one day, all criminals will be under the tribunal. That's a, a great commentary, great explanation of what is to come and what you as a Ukrainian and all Ukrainians desire. You know, I do believe that the International Criminal Court is one way, uh, like they did in the Nuremberg, Nuremberg trials, uh, the issue, though, is bringing them to Ukraine. Uh, so bringing Russian soldiers to Ukraine to be tried in Ukrainian courts for their crimes. And I, we'll need both, wouldn't you say? We, because back we look at World War II uh, and see that, well, uh, International Criminal Court didn't quite work well with German troops. They needed to bring them to Israel in order to be tried properly and justly to hear from the victims themselves. Do you have similar thoughts in Ukraine about uh, Russian soldiers being tried in Ukraine rather than in the International Criminal Court? Uh, you see, I'm not an expert of uh, international law. Uh, I think uh, there, there are some international procedures. Uh, I'm not uh, aware of them, uh, but I'm afraid uh, in case uh, any Russian soldiers uh, in, identified as a, a war criminal will be back in Ukraine, uh, we, um, uh, we unfortunately could face uh, some... Uh, uh, some attempts uh, to uh, to kill them by Ukrainian people because uh, they have a lot of hate in their hearts and I could understand why. Uh, and uh, they just um, want to revenge. And uh, our task as, uh, uh, as normal society uh, to bring them uh, to court, not to to give them to the our people, uh, not to give uh, to allow uh, to revenge uh, to revenge uh, as uh, as, uh, as barbarians. Uh, we should act um, as uh, um, as people uh, of, uh, of of normal society. Uh, and uh, I I afraid that um, it is po possible or a high possibility if these uh, soldiers will be bring to Ukraine, uh, they could not be alive uh, till the court. It, because they uh, bring a lot of uh, deaths, uh, a lot of crimes, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of tears to our people. Uh, it will be better uh, to use uh, international procedures, uh, use international uh, law, because uh, I, I think it, it, we have uh, the world have already uh, rules uh, what we should do in such situation. Uh, our task is uh, to, of course, to win, to end this war, and uh, to record all the. Uh, all the materials uh, that um, uh, that could concern uh, military crimes and uh, that could be useful for any uh, any uh, tribunal or any uh, any uh, court project uh, process. It's very uh, centered and, and balanced of you to say that about international criminal court. In the event that international criminal court does not. Uh, try uh, try um, and prosecute these war crimes after the war. Do you foresee any uprising happening by Ukrainians to bring them to justice in in Ukraine? Uh, yes, if uh, uh, if it will be impossible to bring them uh, to any responsibility uh, under the international court, I think uh, it. it uh, our people, uh, family, uh, victims' families, uh, they they would uh, demand uh, to bring them to Ukrainian court. Uh, and uh, actually, I'm not sure that our criminal codex uh, even have a position of military war. But uh, also, uh, I'm sure that have um, punishment for murders, for for rape, uh, and so on. But uh, I, even I'm not sure there is any articles uh, for and punishment for military for military 
uh, crimes uh, because it's <laughs> I think it was impossible just to imagine such situation uh, 10 15 or even 30 years ago Ukraine as an independent country is 30 years old uh, it was impossible to predict and uh, forecast all this situation and uh, put all these articles and punishment for military for military crimes uh, in our criminal codex, for example. Perhaps it's time for a change to come to the criminal courts with something yeah. much different in terms of, uh, of uh, rules of engagement uh, in, in our criminal courts. I have a, uh, in our, in Ukraine's criminal courts, I wanted to talk about the relative calm that you're feeling now in Kiev and uh, Kiev and the movement toward May 9th uh, and which is uh sort of the day that uh, Russia celebrated victory against uh, Germans in World War II. A lot of people are predicting that there will be more war and bloodshed up until that date. Do you feel a, sem a sense of, uh, of security is consistent or will, be, will continue in Kiev? Or do you expect things to change a bit in the next weeks or months to come? Uh, 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 first of all, I uh, I believe that uh, that Putin and Russians they uh, are symbolist and uh, they uh, have their uh, May 9th like a, a national icon, and uh, I could uh, forecast that uh, they uh, may uh, strengthen their activity and air attacks uh, during this day. For example, we have Easter this Sunday, uh, but uh, following Monday, uh, which is uh, which is in Ukraine, in Ukrainian culture, in Orthodox culture, is uh, uh, also Easter, uh, Easter day. Uh, we have uh, Sunday, Monday and Tuesday is three days of Easter celebration. Uh, but uh, on the following Monday, uh, Russian made uh, a lot of air attacks uh, beside its Orthodox country and they uh, they put a lot of priests in their army and uh, their patriarch uh, speak about uh, about this war that it's a good uh, good thing. Uh, they attack Ukraine uh, heavily the following Monday after Easter, and uh, they attack uh, Odessa uh, and killed a family with a three months baby. Uh, on the following Monday after Easter. Uh, and uh, I, I wonder why they could not start on Easter, but they, they do all this dark uh, uh, their, um, attacks on Monday. That is why I believe they will uh, make, uh, I, I think, air attack, heavy air attack, uh, in the beginning of May uh, and closer to the uh, May uh, uh, May 9th, to the victory day. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure that they could attack the whole territory of Ukraine uh, because uh, they spent uh, a lot of uh, their missiles already. Uh, some of our experts think that they uh, have uh, less than 40% of uh, their missiles uh, resource. Uh, it means that uh, every day, because they attack every day, they have less and less uh, possibilities to attack Ukraine. Uh, and also uh, in March, uh, Ukrainian armed force um, destroyed a lot of military planes and uh, killed or um, surrounded uh, military, um, I don't know, uh, how to say it in English, uh, military aviators. Um, uh, uh, I don't know how to call the, um, the man who uh, managed the military plane. The, yeah, the commander or... A the commander, command yes. Yep. And, uh, and uh, uh, killed or surrounded a lot of uh, commanders with, um, uh, uh, with great experience. And now they have lack of experience commanders uh, to manage military planes. It also the factor that uh, uh, decreases their possibility to attack heavily. But 
uh, situation in southern Ukraine and uh, eastern Ukraine, it's Donetsk, Lugansk region, it's uh, Kherson, partly Mykolaiv, and uh, they attack Odessa uh, by missiles. Uh, the situation is uh, extremely risky and um, dangerous, I could say, uh, and uh, I think uh, the field of battle uh, for the nearest two weeks will be southern and eastern Ukraine. Also, they try to surround Kharkiv, uh, but uh, I, I feel, I, I feel here that uh, they couldn't uh, uh, do it effectively because Kharkiv is a very large city, uh, almost uh, as uh, large as Kyiv, and it is physically almost impossible to surround it. Uh, you need uh, so much troops to do it. And um, they couldn't uh, stop food supply and uh, humanitarian support. That is why uh, Kharkiv stay strong, stay strong and uh, keep fighting. Uh, and I believe uh, they, uh, in the nearest time, they uh, leave uh, Kharkiv district and um, concentrate and focus all their uh, all their uh, resources uh, to. Uh, southern Ukraine. Uh, now they uh, almost uh, uh, take Mariupol, uh, but Mariupol uh, has, uh, I could say, uh, it's hard, it's Azovstal, uh, it's a um, metallurgical plant, one uh, of the biggest uh, in Ukraine and in Europe, and uh, our very brave uh, battalion Azov, uh, ex extremely experienced uh, warriors, uh, still keep uh, Azovstal and uh, they uh, Russian couldn't uh, fight and couldn't uh, take Mariupol as a, as a whole city despite the uh, Mariupol buildings uh, almost destroyed but uh, in Azovstal there is uh, almost 1000 of civilians they they are uh, under uh, in shelters and there is uh, battalion Azov uh, who defend them uh, and uh, Th th that is why uh, Russians still uh, try to fight uh, Mariupol because it helps them uh, to to build a, a corridor to the Crimea. Uh, and uh, I could forecast that the, in the nearest two weeks, uh, so it will be almost till the May uh, 9th, uh, the main battle will be uh, in uh, Donetsk. Uh, region, uh, Mariupol and uh, Kherson. Kherson is now occupied, but um, uh, people of Kherson, they are not uh, stop uh, fighting and they do not stop resistance. They every day come to the center of the city uh, with, uh, with Ukrainian uh, flags uh, and uh, they uh, ask uh, occupants go away because Kherson is a Ukrainian city. Uh, and uh, I think that the uh, that Russians will keep um, attack uh, Odessa, uh, maybe also this one two weeks. And uh, they are not um, successful uh, and effective uh, in uh, overtaking Mykolaiv. It's also South Ukraine uh, because um, their strong city. Uh, uh, city authorities and military authorities uh, and military administration in Mykolaiv is uh, very strong, uh, but uh, they uh, terrorize uh, people by air attacks. Uh, when uh, it is uh, artillery, it is almost impossible to, to protect their cells. When it is air attack, we can use air defense uh, and our air defense is, uh, is good. Uh, so uh, I think that um, situation in Kiev, in uh, western uh, and northern Ukraine um, uh, will keep uh, almost on the same level, uh, but with the moments of air attacking using rockets from Belarus, for example, or, or from Belgorod, it's uh, border of uh, between Russia and Ukraine. But uh, the hottest battle uh, using heavy artillery uh, will be. Uh, in the field of south in Ukraine. So it seems the general understanding in Ukraine and your understanding really is that the, the areas that will sustain the most battle are really in the south. Yeah. And uh, it seems that 
central part of Ukraine, the heart of Ukraine, Kiev, is it will remain. Now, let me ask you a question. What are people thinking? I know things seem to be back mm-hmm. to business as usual with massive destruction around you. So the requirements for more infrastructure investment is eminent and may take years to, to rebuild. And what are people thinking about the end of the war? Are they thinking it will go on indefinitely? Are they thinking there will be a definitive stop to it? What What's the general consensus, the general opinion from you and and your fellow citizens uh in my opinion uh we could face um, a kind of stages of war uh for example uh, now we are uh, on the stage of uh, direct heat of direct direct uh direct battle uh and uh it is possible uh after um, months or two uh, to become uh, to go to the stage two uh, when uh, we uh, will have almost zero uh, artillery attack uh, almost uh, zero battles but we have uh, still still will have risks risk of air attacks uh, risks of uh, new uh, new war but uh, it will be the second stage in my opinion will be uh much uh easier for people uh to come back to their homes and uh and start rebuilding uh infrastructure rebuilding their uh their houses uh uh to uh to make uh um, things uh, more similar they have in normal peaceful life uh but uh speaking in long term perspective uh, having such a neighbor, uh, uh, we should be every time ready uh, for their attack. Uh, it is very similar as for me, like um, like Israeli had. Uh, we just uh, from the very beginning, from uh, from kindergarten, from school, every Ukrainian should understand that that we have and always have a very dangerous neighbor, uh, and uh, this neighbor could attack every possible moment. That is why uh, from very early age, our every Ukrainian kid should understand what is a uh, danger signal, what is air attack, uh, what is algorithm of uh, his action, what should every uh, every kid do when he uh, saw, uh, when he hears, for example, uh, air attack sirens. Uh, what uh, should do uh, teacher uh, when uh, when kids have a lesson and uh, we understand that uh, we have air attack or rocket attack. Uh, we should uh, replan our infrastructure in order to have shelters in every house. For example, experiences of Israeli when they uh, from the, uh, I, I could um, uh, exactly remember the, uh, the year, but from a certain year, every houses uh, every house built in israeli should have a protected room uh, they called mamad and uh, there are certain rules uh, for building this room uh, and in in case of air attack or any any danger uh, the family should uh, gather in this room and uh, keep safe uh, uh, and uh, i think uh, it it could be a rule for uh, new uh, buildings in Ukraine too. Also, we should revise our school for uh, any uh, any uh, children uh, concerning infrastructure. Uh, we should revise shelter because uh, uh, a lot of Soviet buildings uh, they have shelters. Uh, our uh, underground is a great shelter, and uh, but for example, in Kiev uh, is. Uh, there is, um, we have uh, much uh, more population as that it was in the time uh, where this infrastructure was planned and built. Uh, that is why water supply, uh, um, toilets, and uh, and so on uh, is um, not enough uh, for the demand we have. Uh, so uh, on the uh, stage of relatively stability, we should replan of our defense infrastructure. Uh, and uh, also we should be ready, uh, every time ready and uh, 
um, uh, and understand this uh, so the statement, not thought, it's statement that we have a neighbor that could attack every time and just live with it and have uh, procedures and algorithm uh, what we do in case of attack, how we protect our kids, uh, handicapped people, elderly people, uh, how our armed force uh, act um, and uh, how critical infrastructure uh, people uh, should act in, uh, but we should be ready. For example, we uh, as NGO, we are, we, we, we are not ready to any war. And uh, when, uh, for example, um, communication and advertising industry start their resistance campaign, uh, informational campaign, uh, we act very chaotically. Uh, it was uh, badly planned because we are not uh, we are not ready for such scenario. And uh, also a task for for us as NGO and for a lot of non-government organization, including uh, Red Cross in Ukraine, for example, and uh, United Nations uh, uh, related organization in Ukraine, uh, to be. Uh, more practical in their procedures uh, because uh, they uh, had a lot of uh, text they had a lot of printed materials uh, but for example when we need uh, to save people uh, people women with children from mariupol a red cross just raise their hands and uh, uh, and uh, do almost nothing uh, and uh, uh, it's a task for for government and for uh, our for our country uh, to to do maybe uh, another organization another ngos another funds uh, to uh, to do uh, these functions because if red cross international red cross does not help us to help uh, civil people from mariupol it means that we as a country as ukraine should have kind of state uh, organization or uh, additional NGO uh, to uh, to solve this problem, uh, and um, the general idea that we should revise all infrastructures and uh, to have uh, rules and procedures for case of attack, and everyone should know that in case of uh, war uh, start, we should act like this because we have all this planned. And your company. IAB is helping in that as well. Tell me more about how that works, how you how you will help um, to create this new entity as well and doing it now uh, in preparation, not just for perhaps next attacks, in preparation for the creation of a new life uh, for, for all Ukrainians. Um, as NGO, we uh, keep working uh, since February. Uh, and uh, in February and March, uh, it was uh, mostly a resistance campaign. We tried to uh, to unite uh, agencies, uh, advertising platforms, uh, advertisers, um, uh, raise money and uh, make uh, communication, make informational campaign to Russia audience, to Belarusia audience, uh, to Euro Europe and uh, United States with different communication messages. Uh, and um, in April, when the situation became much better in Kyiv, for example, uh, we uh, restart our routine activity. I think it's uh, now it's level of 50% of our normal life. We uh, restarted our committees, restarted our projects, despite the fact that uh, me and uh, one of our projects uh, are in Kyiv. Uh, our our coordinator is in Poland and one more project is in Germany, uh, but um, uh, our COVID experience uh, help us and uh, we uh, work remotely, distantly, and uh, it's okay, it's quite effectively. Also, we uh, tried to support our national businesses because uh, a lot of um, both international and Ukrainian advertisers that stopped their campaigns because of war. And uh, we launched some projects to help uh, our um, industry to find new clients uh, and uh, to find international clients, for example. Uh, 
Uh, also, we make um, barometers uh, to understand situation uh, and impact of war to, the, to our industry. Uh, and I could say that I have uh, March results and now we are in process of finalizing April. And uh, I, uh, I, I could finger, cross my fingers, uh, April situation show us that uh, it is recovery, slow recovery. Uh, of our industry and our industry is also a taxpayer and uh, it's uh, uh, make their contribution to our uh, domestic national product so uh, recovery in this field mean, means that we uh, we may, uh, made our contribution to uh, total ukrainian economics recovery uh, also uh, we as ngo we uh, we we deeply understand that uh, when the war uh, uh, will end, uh, we, uh, we, we uh, this uh, this uh, experience, this situation raise uh, a lot of tasks for us. Uh, task uh, to uh, form um, to build uh, effective uh, communication system uh, for informational campaign for informational resistance. Uh, which could be uh, properly planned uh, and with um, uh, all functions and all roles uh, planned beforehand. Uh, and in just we see the uh, red bottom, uh, we understand that we have war crisis situation, ecological situation, COVID or something like that. We have planned infrastructure uh, and um, uh, every person in this uh, structure understand his role, his uh, responsibility zones. Uh, we could uh, act and uh, actually it will, will be more effective that we do in May, in March, because it, it was a lot of chaos uh, and uh, it, it is understandable. Uh, and also it is an um, experience uh, of us, uh, for us uh, to, to plan, to have scenarios, scenario, uh, of pandemia scenario of war scenario of ecological catastrophe and a lot of scenarios and a lot of algorithms to do uh, also uh, we as ngo uh, could uh, raise this question to our uh, cabinet of ministers to the uh, uh, our government uh, and uh, uh, also uh, we could propose uh, our help and industry support uh, just to uh, fulfill this function because I'm not sure that uh, on um, government level, on country level, uh, we have a uh, function or any person responsible for informational resistance. Uh, also, it's a kind of uh, vacancy and uh, we as uh, uh, NGO, we could uh, fill this uh, vacancy and uh, do all, 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 all this functionality good because we are industry of uh, advertising communication experts and uh, what we do perfectly for advertisers and for clients, uh, we also could do perfectly for our country. And that's what fascinates me of the many things that fascinate me about you, Nastasia, is that you have remained in Kiev. I know that others did, too. And you said um, in another interview that you had no choice. That's what you did. You stayed. While other friends and Ukrainians were fleeing, you stayed. Tell me more about that choice for you and your children. What, yeah. Tell me about that, that choice to stay while others were fleeing. What? What were you thinking uh, kind of psychologically, uh, thought wise, scenario planning wise? What, what were you what was going through your head and your thinking process to bring you to that conclusion to stay, to do well for your country, to and to be there as and continue as a citizen of Ukraine? Uh, OK, uh, uh, it was not easy decision, uh, but uh, uh, it is very difficult uh, to me, uh, for me uh, to uh, name uh, any rational arguments because uh, for me it was more emotional. I just feel safe um, in my uh, apartment, in my house. Uh, it's it, uh, very difficult uh, to share this feeling, but I have it. Uh, feeling uh, that staying in Kiev uh, in my apartment for me and the three of my kids will be safe. Um, 
for for some 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 days in March, um, we have uh, we as Ukrainian have a, have had a general illusion that uh, Kiev is under air attack, but Western Ukraine, for example, Lviv, uh, Ternopil, Ivano-Frankivsk, uh, uh, they they could not be subject of air attacking. Uh, but uh, uh, it was a mistake, and one day uh, Ukrainians understand that uh, every big city or every uh, city with important if infrastructure, both military or airports or um, uh, metallurgical plants uh, and something like that, uh, could be a subject of air attacking. Uh, and uh, here I understand also, or um, not understand, but uh, receive uh, some um, ra rational arguments. Uh, in Kiev, there is the strongest air defense uh, comparing to, to all Ukraine. Uh, yes, they attack, uh, they could attack uh, every city in Ukraine, but uh, when they attack uh, Kiev, it uh, will um, have the lowest efficiency rate just because uh, in Kyiv we have the best air defense. Uh, and also, I, um, I, I don't uh, remember if I uh, mentioned that fact, uh, I am um, uh, not a military expert, but I am a medievist and I am expert uh, of uh, uh, military history. And uh, for me, uh, from my uh, knowledge is, um, uh, I understand that it is uh, very difficult uh, to uh, surround such a large city as Kyiv because uh, Kyiv uh, uh, is a large city with population between four or five million people. And uh, Dnieper, uh, it's a river, uh, one of the largest rivers uh, in Europe, divided Kyiv into two parts uh, and uh, to uh, to go from the left bank to the right, uh, it's a transport uh, task, not not easy transport task because we have not so much uh, a way to do it effectively. It means uh, that even in case uh, uh, our enemy could, uh, for example, uh, surround a uh, left bank of Kyiv, uh, it is easily to uh, keep um, and uh, st keep defense uh, on the right bank of uh, River Dnieper and uh, uh, right bank Kiev. Uh, uh, I understand that uh, e uh, if they want to surround Kiev, they should use almost all their resources. Uh, as I remember, Russians uh, use about 100,000 uh, uh, soldiers. Uh, to attack Ukraine, but they um, they may, made a classical mistake. Uh, instead of attack one point, for example, Kyiv, uh, they uh, try to attack uh, a, a lot of uh, directions. For example, they attack um, Chernigiv, Sumy, Kharkiv, it's the uh, largest um, region's uh, capital. Uh, nearby Kyiv region. And also they uh, started um, uh, their attack on uh, south and, uh, and western Ukraine, uh, and uh, it means they just disperse their resources. Uh, and uh, for me, uh, it was understandable. I'm not a military expert, but I, uh, I know uh, military history well. Uh, it, it was uh, almost impossible uh, to, to take uh, Kyiv quickly. And uh, they also have strategical uh, mistake because they think our people will, uh, uh, will invite them and will be very happy to see uh, Russian tanks uh, and uh, will not resist. But uh, it was uh, definitely a mistake because uh, every village every small village um, uh, made uh, great efforts and great uh, resistance efforts. Uh, uh, it means that uh, every this um, step uh, on resistance slow down, uh, slow down their uh, ability to surround and take Kyiv. And uh, here once more, I, uh, every time I remember the price of uh, stability and safety in Kyiv, it's a price of a uh, thousand killed, uh, raped, uh, murdered, uh, tortured people uh, in 
Chernigiv, Kharkiv, Sumy, uh, a lot of villages uh, in Kiev regions, and of course, it's our uh, city's um, heroes, it's small satellites uh, like Bucha, like Erpin, like Hostomil. Uh, it it our price and price of our understanding uh, how to build lines of defense of such cities uh, like um, region capitals, like, like country capital. Uh, and um, uh, here I have uh, not, not not pleasant emotions uh, when I see when I think about the price uh, we uh, as Ukraine pay for keep and still uh, still um, still paying this price in Kharkiv, uh, still paying this uh, price in the Poltava region because uh, they are object of heavy air attacks, but. Uh, they could uh, they could destroy they could uh, still make a lot of destruction and air attack uh, but uh, we are small country uh, in uh, in terms of territory uh, comparing to russia but we are a large country uh, in terms of territory compared to european country and uh, uh, russians need uh, a lot of uh, soldiers uh, to occupy and to keep because uh, there is two different tasks to attack to surround uh, to take uh, capital and another uh, task and it is more resource demanding uh, to keep occupied territory under control because uh, population is not support uh, occupants population resists population uh, full is full of uh, hate and uh, and we, we 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 will be we we will resist in any case. Um, so I, I I remember that your question is was um, uh, why I stay and I stay because I have emotional feeling that it will be safe for, for me. Uh, and uh, also uh, later I have uh, a, uh, some rational understandings that. Uh, it is impossible for them to to take Kiev as they take small cities. They couldn't even uh, take Chernigov, which is uh, which is a region capital, but uh, Chernigov is much smaller than Kiev. But they couldn't take even Chernigov, for example. Well, their reign of terror has been unconscionable, and it must have a stop. And they have not been. How, they have not been triumphant in those regions, nor nor will they, because of these uh, the, these kinds of resistance troops, resistance uh, from your citizens, your volunteer army, your uh, your troops in the second force line, the first force line. Uh, you have three lines of defenses and uh, many different forces above that. And uh, largely, Russia has, and I'm understanding here, has has uh, has miscalculated uh, yes. the Ukrainian effort and defense uh, uh, to stop their reign of terror. And uh, the price that y Ukraine has paid certainly um, is incalculable. incalculable. Um, and the uh, the tariffs and uh, and um, amazing amount of uh, uh, sort of reparations that should happen after, whether it be Russian oligarchs coming to uh, to justice and uh, Russian soldiers coming to justice must happen. Um, really incredible, Nastasia, what you've done, um, who you are as a person, uh, as a, uh, a patriot of Ukraine, as a leader of IAB and, a, and an NGO, uh, your government, uh, it, uh, I, I would think, I know, will be grateful for the help that you've done um, and will do to repair the uh, communications infrastructure and prepare it, really, for the future with such knowledge and understanding of the algorithms, situations, stages of war, and other types of uh, ecological and uh, environmental disasters that may occur. Uh, you are at the forefront of not only understanding, but also of creating these kinds of uh, initiative responses. Uh, you are an integral part of that resistance movement and uh, an amazing citizen of Ukraine as, as, as and, and just incredible person to know, for me to know. Uh, and a, such a pleasure to have you on the show 
and to hear your wisdom and uh, your responses to these questions about this unconscionable war against Ukraine. Thank you, Luke.